G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. All right, Wednesday morning here in Australia, market cap has moved up just a little bit, but really it's kind of a lot of sideways uh, action going on at the moment, I guess would be the best. You know, we're fluctuating uh, between prices in a lot of coins at the moment, and we'll get into that and sort of have a look at, you know, what my uh, thought process and I guess prediction is for what might happen to the market uh, in the next coming sort of days, weeks, months, and all the rest of it. But as we can see, entire, in ma uh, entire market cap, 1.7 trillion. So look, up from the 1.4 trillion we got to, but still well down from the 2. Point, I think, 6, 2.7 trillion we got to. All right, BTC dominance still climbing again, so now it's at 42%. ETH dominance is, actually, I think that might have gone down a little bit, and ETH dominance risen a little bit. But look, this is very interesting. Gas prices are super low at the moment. Now, still not low, but super low compared to where they have been. Again, we want those single digits. Now, with the price uh, of gas at the moment, I have finally got around to uh, converting onto layer twos for a number of things. So uh, I'm on layer two for Aave using the Aave Polygon, and I'll probably do a video of that in the future. Converted my KNC, so they were the old KNC tokens. I think it was KNCL. Uh, into the new KNC tokens using the new Kyber, uh, Kyber Network uh, version 2 platform, so uh, reduced fees, and likewise I did the same with synthetic. So I may do a video on that in the future, but now's a really good time to basically do anything on Ethereum, and particularly if you're wanting to convert over to Layer 2s, because that was the problem, is there was still a high cost to get over to the Layer 2s, and you know, only a couple of weeks back, they were probably costing you, you know, literally 70, 80, maybe a couple of hundred dollars to do it. Uh, when I converted over, I think it was about $30 uh, for the transaction. So that's still a bit, but once you're on the layer two, then it's all very, very cheap. There's almost no cost involved whatsoever, but it's getting to the layer two that is, uh, you know, the expensive part. And now, currently, with those gas prices, sorry, up here, they're quite cheap. All right, so let's have a look at the market again. We can see most of these things are just kind of starting to travel sideways now. So it definitely looks like they have found a bottom, but there's no guarantees, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. But look, we can still see over the last seven days, a lot of these projects, they're still well down. I mean, 40, 50%. So, you know, if you think we're still in a, a bull market, we're just in a bit of a bear cycle within a bull market, these are still possibly, you know, again, I never offer financial advice, but for me, I already told you, I was buying uh, over the last few days. Now, most of my cash is deployed, so I don't really have a whole lot of cash sitting on the side. And if the market continues to go down, well, I just dollar cost average in to the big ones that I believe in, you know, fundamentally and long term. And that will be Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum, possibly Cardano and uh, Polygon, maybe even a little bit of Polkadot. We'll have to wait and see. Polkadot, really, I've got my position in it. They, they've still... Uh, have to live up to some hype but look again I've said this before in all fairness a lot of these cryptos do they're not finished projects they're still in the building process consider yourself like a VC uh, investor at the moment so a venture capitalist uh, investor you're getting into projects super early before they're completed in the hope that they will do well now again, it's not quite VC investing, but that is the way I look at investing in cryptocurrencies outside of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a finished product. Uh, can it get better and scale and all the rest of it? Yes, but it is basically a finished product. All the rest of them really, uh, they're not finished products. All right, so let's have a look. What's done well in the last 24 hours? Right, Thorchain doing extremely well. So up 20%, nice. Holo, Telecoin, Swiss Borg. I mean, Polygon, you know, making some great comebacks. Still not quite at the $2 uh, it was before. And we've got some interesting Polygon news. Ethereum Classic, not sure what's going on there. Chainlink uh, making a bit of a comeback, which is nice. So look, some pretty good gains there and some pretty steady great gains. Anything above 15% in 24 hours for me, great gains. Anything under 15% in 24 hours is just an okay gain. And look, we'll take any gain any day of the week as opposed to a loss. But you can see Polygons generally did pretty well. It did have a correction, but it has recovered pretty quickly. Again, not to its old all-time highs, but still done pretty well. And I've got some interesting Polygon news. All right, let's have a look. What hasn't done well? Has anything still been knocked around in the last 24 hours? Is, is there anything that's still going down? 
Right, Shiba Inu. Well, of course, that was bound to happen. Uh, internet computer. Uh, so that is really getting knocked around. I think this was 300 and something and continues to go down. It does look like it might be bottoming, bottoming out now. So if that's something you're into, then, you know, could be a good buy at the moment. Waves, Nexo, Maker, Horizon, Kasama. Look, these losses really aren't too bad now over the last 24 hours. But it is the fact that they've continued to go down. Uh, you know, like waves, that's really just continuing to go down. Internet computer looks like it might have bottomed out. And same with Shiba Inu a little bit, at least over the last few days, though it was dropping there. And look, for me, I'm not buying any Shiba Inu. I don't care what price it gets to. I'm staying away from it. Uh, Dogecoin, again, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I've got into Doge twice and doubled my money, so I may look to do something similar again. But again, I'd never throw tons of money at Dogecoin just because there's not a lot of development on there. But it does look like it might have bottomed out. A lot of these coins are looking like they've been bottoming out. Polkadot, hopefully, is starting to bottom out. Uh, I did buy some Polkadot the other day. Uh, and look, if it continues to go down, I may buy a little bit more here and there. But I got some Polkadot quite cheap, and I don't think it'll go back down to that price. Filecoin uh, continues to go down, but does look like it's bottomed out a bit. So look, no real major losses there, and no real major gains either. I mean, there was one, you know, fairly decent gain. Well, two, 20% plus is good, and then the 15% uh, and below is not too bad. All right, let's go on to some stories before we get onto the chart. All right, so the dip is 100% being bought. So IT giant Globant joins, hopefully I said that, yep, Globant joins by buying half a million dollars worth of Bitcoin. So the software development company has filed documents with the SEC revealing an allocation of half a million dollars, 500,000 in Bitcoin. So again, that's, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot in comparison to some companies, but it's still a lot and shows that this dip is being bought. People are getting in, and I'm sure that's what they were probably waiting for, just a very good entry point. Could be wrong, but I get the feeling like that's probably what they're waiting for, and I get the feeling like we're going to find out about a lot of companies that have done the same, uh, and that will come out over the next few weeks. Now, the reason I believe this is also this story. So Goldman Sachs says FOMO is driving institutional investors to Bitcoin. And they don't really have a choice at the moment because here, if you're an asset manager or running a macro fund and your closest rivals are all investing in cryptocurrencies, and a lot are, not all of them, but a lot are, and they're seeing material returns, your investors will naturally wonder why you are not investing in this asset class. Now, Goldman, Goldman uh, Sachs have come out and said that they consider it a new asset class. So that's big from them because they were not uh, crypto friendly uh, for a number of years. You know, Jamie Dimon, you know, all those kind of people weren't. But they are changing their tune and slowly coming over. And we've already seen in the charts that it looks like it was some market manipulation. And again, we'll get to the charts soon. Now, we were talking about uh, D-Infinity before, how it maybe it has bottomed out. So again, let's go over here. Where is Internet Computer? Looks like it might have bottomed out. So at around 133, we'll have to wait and see. D Infinity is, I don't know if that's, yeah, it is the internet computer. So D Infinity is giving developers $200 million to build on the internet computer. Now it says here the D Infinity Foundation has launched a $200 million fund to promote development on the internet computer. Now they have gone in to say that they are decentralized and things like that. I, I was watching something on Coin Bureau, that's what I was watching, uh, Coin Bureau, and he did a a delve into D-Infinity and the into internet computer and it basically looked as though it wouldn't be as decentralized uh, as what most people are probably thinking it is. Now again, I'm not saying that's true or not, but for me, I really want to make sure I'm involved in things that are, you know, as decentralized as absolutely possible. So again, Ethereum, again, it can be even more decentralized, don't get me wrong. Bitcoin's very decentralized. Anything that's too centralized, I'm really trying to stay away from those kind of things. But in all fairness, all projects start out somewhat centralized, even if they claim to be decentralized. 
and then their tokens you know slowly get divvied out and they become more and more decentralized so this is something i might have to have a look into and particularly at the price of about a hundred dollars 130 dollars it's seeming a lot better than you know the three four hundred dollars it got to and i'm just somewhat worried about how high it quickly jumped out i mean again it was you know hardly even heard of and now it's in the top 10 uh we'll wait and see but this is something i may look at getting some of get you know just getting some exposure all right now cnbc they've included ripple in its 50 top distributed uh, disruptor companies list so it says ripple has been included in cnbc's disruptor 50 as uh, number 38 of the most successful private companies this year so even with all this kind of stuff going on you know the sec lawsuit and you know cryptos you know it's been up and it's been down and all the rest of it uh, still making the list of one of the most successful disruptor companies out there so for me i haven't given up on uh, ripple at all again i told you i sold a lot of ripple a while ago i am slowly starting to accumulate a little bit more here and there at the moment because it wouldn't surprise me if all of a sudden the SEC come out and say uh, case dropped and then Ripple goes to the moon. Now I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I really don't know. That's why I jumped out. I do regret doing that because I basically sold for <laughs> less than the price is worth right now, and I lost a fair bit of money. But look, you know we all live and we learn, and I'll, you know, I, I have learnt from that. I'll never do that again unless there's real bad news. And again, not just a court case. You know, companies have court cases lodged against them all the time. That doesn't mean that uh, it's all of a sudden going to zero. But I had a substantial position in Ripple. And I, again, I took that money, invested it into other things and have done extremely well and most likely better than what I would have done by simply staying in Ripple. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Or XRP, I should say, because I wasn't so much in Ripple. All right. Now, the last news story I wanted to look at. Mark Cuban invests in Ethereum Layer 2 Polygon. He's considered a pretty smart guy in this sort of space. Now, I'm not saying he knows everything, but billionaire investor Mark Cuban has made an investment in Polygon, a Layer 2 Ethereum scaling solution. Now, the price of Matic token is up more than 9,000% year to date. 9,000%. So it's basically done amazing. <laughs> Near 100x is what it's done. Now, Polygon, there's a lot of talk out there at the moment about whether it will be useful once Ethereum uh, ETH 2.0 comes out. So, again, I don't claim to be you know, an oracle and know it all, but from what I have read and what I've been able to find out is that ETH 2.0, like actual ETH itself, won't be enough to scale for the world it will need other layer two solutions. So I don't think Polygon is going to go anywhere. There's a lot of people talking that, you know, you want to get your money out before ETH 2.0 rolls out because then uh, Polygon's price will really tank. I don't think that's going to happen. Will it have a retracement? Absolutely. I've got no, no doubt about that. But tank, no. And Ethereum 2.0 itself, you know, the, the layer two Ethereum, it won't be enough to scale for the rest of the world. They have even come out and said they still need side chains and other layer two solutions. So I really don't think Polygon uh, is going to get hit too hard by it. Don't get me wrong. I definitely think there'll be a price retracement, but I don't think that means they suddenly uh, die and go away. Uh, Vitalik Buterin himself has come out and said Ethereum 2.0 itself won't be able to scale enough at least in the short term uh, for everybody it will need layer 2 solutions there will be other ones out there it won't simply just be ETH 2.0 so I think Polygon still has a very bright future and I'm guessing Mark Cuban does as well if he's now invested in it now when he invested uh, would be the interesting question I don't know if he was in it you know a year ago when it was trading for anywhere between you know uh, under a cent to sort of three cents but if he was, congratulations to him. I know that's where I got on and Polygon has been uh, my best performer by an absolute country mile. But I have had a couple other ones that have done pretty good as well. All right, last but not least, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. And this is what I wanted to show you. This is where Bitcoin has been trading since we had that big March sell-off last year. So obviously the pandemic hit. Now this is the range that we've been in. Now what we can see is we got oversold. For a little bit here and then we had that correction dip back down this was about a 34 percent correction 
Now we weren't up in the oversold bracket for too long. Now we dip back down and now we stayed oversold for quite some time. And again, this is that why Wyckoff uh, manipulation. Uh, you know, you overlay it to this and it's almost textbook perfect. It's exactly the same. So we were oversold for a really long time, bit of a sell off. And then we, they pumped the market up again for everyone to think it's still going to go. And then boom, we came back down. But look where we are now. It wicked almost perfectly, literally almost perfectly. And now we're trading down here. And again, this line in the middle is kind of the average price. When it gets over it, you should possibly consider taking some profits. When it's under it, it's probably a good time to buy it. And definitely when you're down there. Now, this won't last forever. Once we do hit our next bear market, this will become invalidated. But until that happens, at the moment, it says that you know Bitcoin is generally a pretty good buy at the moment. It's not to say it can't go lower, come back down here, test $32,000, absolutely could. Or maybe it takes a while and gets to $34,000 uh, over here. No one knows. But at the moment, Anything under here is buying opportunity, generally, not financial advice. And once we get above here, this is where it's a good idea to start taking some profits. Now, it's not a golden rule. It's not always as easy as that because as you can see, you know, you don't want to be taking profits here, or at least too much profits here, when it can go up here. And again, here, you know, you're probably starting to uh, take profits, but then it kind of dips down and you, you know, you really could have just kind of held there. Uh, again, it's not that you couldn't have taken some profits there and bought in here, but you don't know which way it's going to go because it still could rock it up from there. So this is just a rough guideline. And again, for me, that's what I use it as, that and all the other information out there. At the moment, according to this, this is a buying opportunity, but that doesn't mean it can't invalidate this because it was invalidated to the upside here. So trust me, it could easily get invalidated to the downside for a short period of time. But if we stay in this bull trend, I think eventually it will come back into here. And at the moment, all I see is a buying opportunity. So for me, I will continue to buy. And really, again, as long as we're kind of underneath this line, I consider Bitcoin a good buying opportunity. And once we start to get above this line, I consider it a good time to take some profits. I'm not simply cashing out and, you know, again, because you don't want to cash out just above here and then see that it goes all the way up here and then wait for it to come back. Because this could, if this continued out and you cashed out here and it went all the way up to here and then finally comes down and meets this line, but back up here, you've actually lost money. You haven't made money. So it's not a golden rule. It's not the be all and end all but it's just a good indicator. And for me, this looks like buying opportunity for me. And so that's what I'm doing. All right, that's it from me. If I can get you to do me one favor, can I get you to go down and hit the like button? Uh, that really helps my videos get seen. And also, can you leave a comment down below? Anything you want to sort of say about whether you think I can do better, uh, if there's something you want me to talk about, something you'd love me to cover, I'd really appreciate that. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.